What's up, everybody? It's your boy Trader Main here for a quick Tuesday night stream. Hope everyone is doing good. Hope everyone's doing well. Had a good long weekend. If you're Canadian here, long weekend this weekend. If you're not Canadian, I don't know. Did you work yesterday? Yeah, Duke Duke want Duke Dumont is sick. All right, so um, going to uh, jump right into the stream here in a, a couple of minutes, but uh, obviously looking like we got some pretty good numbers here to get going, which is great. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, I will be uh, streaming earlier and on Monday next week. As you guys know, I had a bit of a hectic uh, travel day coming home from the UFC event in Dallas. So shout out to the Campi Panda team for bringing me out to Dallas. It was super fun. I got to meet some of the, the CT uh, fans, which was super cool. So shout out to those guys. Uh, thanks for coming out and hanging and partying and having a good time. It was a good time. It is really fucking hot in Dallas and really flat. Uh, so I got sunburned. Uh, but uh, I love you too, Brandon. Um, but uh, yeah, I had a good time. I had a hell of a time getting home, man. I had like a six o'clock flight home. It got delayed like three or four times. They kept delaying it 30 minutes, an hour. And then they're like, the plane's here, but we got no one to operate it. Like the flight attendants already are working in overtime. So um, yeah, they kept delaying it, delaying it. And then they're like, oh, we might go. And then at like 10.30 at night, they just canceled it. And uh, since it was an entire plane and so late at night, the flights out the next day already were all booked on that airline, on American. So they're trying to fly people out today, another day later. I was like, there's no way that's fucking happening. So I fucking booked a flight out on Delta. Like I flew from Dallas to Minnesota and then Minnesota over to Vancouver. The flight from Minnesota to Vancouver is as long as the direct flight from Dallas to Vancouver. So complete nightmare. I left at like four in the morning, did not sleep much. So I was kind of out of it yesterday, but uh, here we are. Um, next week, I will uh, I will uh, be streaming at a more reasonable time, a little earlier in the day, closer to the daily close because it's a little bit better for everyone. Most people are awake around then. All right, quick shout out to Prime. You guys have been doing absolutely amazing. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out and you want to support these streams, which are free for you, the best way to do that is sign up to Prime XBT using my link in the description. If you enter code MAIN50 before you deposit any money, you get a 7% bonus on that deposit. I get a kickback on all deposits made. So if you want to know how I'm getting compensated, I'm telling you exactly how it works. I get a kickback on people depositing money. So signing up is great. I appreciate the signups, but if you want to help me, Send a little bit of money onto the exchange. It doesn't have to be much, whatever you can do. And then obviously trade. We've been crushing it the entire month of July. I'm looking forward to crushing it in August as well. And if you want to support me and you're following my trades, uh, do it on Prime. So uh, thank you guys so much. We had a killer month for signups and deposits in July. So I really appreciate it. All right. So uh, let's get into uh, the charts. So this is the Bitcoin monthly chart. The reason I have this up here is obviously we recently started a new month, right? It is now August. Can you believe it? 2022 is more than halfway over. Okay, July is the seventh month of the year. We're now starting the eighth month. We're in the final third of 2022. And I don't know about you guys, but it still feels like, um, like 2020. 
Like I haven't really registered the last two years really in terms of time. They've gone by super fast. It's been super weird, obviously, with COVID and all that kind of shit. But an entire bull run uh, has happened in that time. And uh, we're starting a new month here. And here's the month of July. So after one, two, three very ugly months, uh, we closed July looking pretty good. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you're following uh, the idiots, I'm sorry, my voice is already hoarse. I can tell just still from the weekend. So I apologize in advance. Um, I got to learn to speak more quietly and more softly. Like this feels way nicer on my vocal cords, but I can't help but yell. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm just so excited to talk to you guys about technical analysis, clearly. Um, you know, if you're following some people on CT, uh, you know, they're saying the bottom is in, you know, oh my God, bears are fucked, all this kind of shit. And it's like, this is why it's always important every once in a while to zoom out, right? And realize that, you know, we're, we're here. Yeah, we had a green month, but... You know, a few months ago, Bitcoin was trading above 50, 60,000 bucks. And we've had several consecutive red months that have been massive. This is just the first bit of relief that we've had in a very long time. I'm not saying that there wasn't money to be made on the long side, anything like that. But we're up 30% from the low. Okay. 30% from the low. We are still 65% off of the high. Okay. So. Don't get too excited yet. I personally am much more of the belief that, you know, a bottom happens like this as opposed to some people who just think like this is how it's going to play out now. Like it just it, we've never really seen this kind of thing before. So I don't know why this time would be different. This is, in my opinion, how a bottom forms, right? Long consolidation sideways accumulation, right? What do you need for price to go up? We need Bitcoin to be accumulated at low prices, right? So for price to move up, a Bitcoin was accumulated down here and distributed up here, right? So if we want to see price go up here, it needs to accumulate, right? There's got to be juice. It's got to be juice to squeeze. All right, so just keep, you know, perspective that's all i'm showing you here is perspective i'm not saying we can't look for longs but perspective the bottom very rarely forms in one fucking candle um all right so let's uh let's get our lines back on here so pretty lackluster attempt at breaking out of the range right so we uh have been following this for you know the entire month of july and the end of june here we had this first move out of the range I wanted to see us hold this retest, but we ended up trading all the way back to the mid-range, but we did catch along, along here, right? 12-hour order block, key SR, SFP, blah, blah, blah. Gave us a nice move to the upside, and we made a new high, but that high was an SFP. So as much as this was a great move here, we SFP'd these highs, and to me, that seems kind of weak. Like, I don't know. Um, personally, I don't love that we took this previous week's high and then closed well below it. Um, you know, looking at on the three day, it's an SFP. The daily's obviously an SFP. The 12 hour was the SFP. So only thing that wasn't an SFP here was the weekly because the swing high on the weekly is actually here. So technically, you know, on the weekly, we've got our bullish weekly order block here and we've just made a weekly swing high here. Right. So if you're looking at the weekly, I think what's most likely to happen is a move back down into here, perhaps. And then maybe we go. Right. But that means that we can come back down, you know, maybe to, you know, 21, six to 22 into this area here. Right. Right around here before going up. Now, it doesn't seem like a big move on the weekly, but from here down to 21, 600, you know, is a 5% move. If you're trading with high leverage and you're long right now and we have that kind of dump, you know, that can fucking wreck you. So personally, I think it's very likely based on how this kind of double top played out here. So we had the range breakout back into the range, failed to make a new high and we're back at the range high here. I personally um, I'm, I'm of the mindset that we likely trade deeper back into the range here. I would not be surprised at all if we trade back to the range low. Um, 
you know, the 12-hour chart here is put in bearish market structure. There's a swing low that's broken. So this would be your most obvious target on the 12-hour. And I think just looking at this very plainly, like I don't really want to see us trade back below here if you're bullish, right? Because this seemed like kind of the level that was capping price here, right? Resistance, resistance, resistance. Small deviation below, but instantly back above. This seems like a pretty critical area, this kind of 21,500 to 22K zone. If I'm a bull, this is my kind of idea, is this is a pullback here. Right, there's your sweet spot, your OTE, and your risk is this deviation. So you wanna buy here and hope that we make a higher low relative to this one, and then boom, higher high, higher low, and then we start talking about that you know, 21,800, 28K area, which is this previous place floor. It's also a 100% extension on the FIB, one-to-one -one extension of this swing. So if you print this swing on top of itself, that's what it means by one-to-one. -one. Okay, so that's, that's the bullish thesis in my opinion. Like I personally do not like how the high time frame chart looks. Like I think that this move looks like it's running out of gas. Um, and I don't think that, you know, the S the S and P necessarily is looking super strong. Like it looks like it's coming up into key resistance here. And uh, if it's going to reject, it seems like this is where it would reject, right? There's your order block here. So this is the down candle, the up candle, excuse me, before the down move that broke market structure. We've now traded all the way back into that. You pull your FIB from here to here, right? It's just above the seven, nine. So key area, it's obviously bounced off this monthly level, right? Monthly order block here gave you a huge bounce. But this is into some resistance here. And this just looks kind of weak to me, high time frame. So my long idea is exactly this. If you're gonna play the long side, I think you aim to bid between 22 Maybe you bid this entire OTE zone if you want because it lines up pretty much identical with that box I drew. So 21,500 up to 22,200. That's the area, this area here where I'd be looking for price to put in a higher low. You also have this breaker right there, right? This breaker zone right here, which we're starting to tag now, but it can come deeper into this area. So that's the confluence for the long, in my opinion, is basically... You know, 20, this FIB, this kind of SR level, right? Deviate, retest of this area here. This is where you want to see the higher low form, I think, if you're a bull. Low, high, higher low, and then you hope for a higher high, and then we start talking about this area here, right? As an area that gets retested. But uh, that would be the bullish thesis, um, in my opinion. So if you're looking to get long, that's where I think you do it. Now, if we go back, to here, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, we have a failed breakout of the range, right? Came above the range high, traded back in, went up again, SFP'd. So I'm looking at this on the 12 hour and I'm saying, okay, this kind of looks like potential shit. So maybe, maybe we come up here. Um, you know, maybe we come up here to this area for a sell. But the problem is, is your risk is pretty high. Like it's pretty far away from your entry. Because if you're going to sell this, your stop has to go above here in my opinion. So what I would want to see is some sort of low time frame trigger. So maybe we run this high into this area here. And then if we SFP or get back below it, then I can have a tighter stop. But basically, <coughs> a move up from here, I think is a sell. And then I, I personally would be targeting back to 20. That's the move I'm more confident in. Just looking at the chart, that's my gut reaction. Um, the reason I laid out the long scenario, sorry, I just have to check a message here real quick.
Yeah, so like I, I'm, I'm thinking we maybe run one of these highs and that will allow me to define my risk by whatever happens here. So what I mean by that is like this. I would want to see a candle up like this and then another one like this that has a a wick like this or something, right? So it closes above, but it SFPs, right? Now, when I'm looking to short, right, my stop now goes here. Because right now, the invalidation on the short side is up here. So I'd want to see something like this, run these highs maybe into this supply here, right? This candle, that's what this box should be. It's a little misdrawn. Into this candle, right? The bearish order block. And I'm looking to short that back into the range low. And hopefully it happens in one candle like that. This is my plan personally. So this is what I'm looking for. But if you want to be bullish, if you're like, yo, trader main, you're wrong. We're going higher. This is the area that I drew out before, right? This is the area where I think you want to see get defended, right? So if I'm taking a short like this, and then we come into this area where I think if we're bullish, we should hold and we start doing something like this, right? So put in some bullish PA, I would cut my short and I would then look to long, right? But if you have no interest in shorting, I think you wait and you see what happens between 21,500 and 22K. I think you wait and see what happens in this area, right? That I explained a little bit earlier. You wait and see and you say, okay, are the bulls going to step up here? And if they do, by all means, start longing. I think initially your stop is here. But if you get something bullish, like it puts in a low, lower low, higher low. Okay, well now your stop is here rather than here. Because there's no way this low gets invalidated if this thing's going to go up from there. And if this low gets invalidated, we very likely take out that low. Right? So that would be the bull scenario. I'm not personally taking this unless it shows me that it wants to be long here and it shows me and it says, okay, no, this area is getting defended. If this area gets defended, by all means, if I get filled on my short, I'll cut it. And if I don't get filled on my short, but it comes down here and it looks bullish, I will long. But I personally am hoping for a move up, sweep of these highs into that supply and I'm looking to short down to the range low at 20K and below this key swing low. But this area, I will watch. 21.5 to 22K, I will watch and I'll see if the bulls step in. But personally, I'm leaning towards a move down. And hopefully, uh, you know, I get filled on some sort of short up here first. Right? I think that would be ideal, right? Trade it back up above 23, get everyone hyped again, and then smack it down. Take out this low first. If we hold below here, target back to the range low. And then you have, then we're probably fucked, but... We'll see. I don't, again, I don't think the bottom's in personally after one month of green, after three straight months and even longer of just straight down price action. I think it's much more likely that we form some sort of big range and we have multiple moves to either side and then we get excited again. But we'll see. All right. So hopefully that makes sense here, guys. Again, my brain is a little foggy as it always is after one of these trips. So let me just get caught up on the chat here. We got a lot of fucking viewers. <clears throat> okay, fuck you. I can't do math. This guy's correcting my math. Sorry. We have five months left in the year, not four months. My apologies. Streaming num rule number one, never do math live. I'm usually pretty good at my live math. Like that explanation where I did all the risk reward stuff, all that mental math was money. Main cooks math. Well, that's obvious. I don't know what year it is. Too much has happened. I agree with you. Throaty McGoaty. Throaty trader. Fuck you guys. Uh, you made a live one, baby. Oh, yo, you, you like Y-E-W-W-W. Okay. Main recently started following you and found your videos super helpful. Thank you. 
Which time frames do you think order blocks are most effective on? I hate that you started out that comment so great and I was so excited and then you ended it with that stupid ass question. Go watch my order block video, brother. Okay, and if you still don't know the answer to that question after watching that video, then by all means, ask me again. But I did an entire video called order blocks with the goal of trying not having to kind of explain what they are every single video because they're a key part of what I do. I have two educational videos where they're purely educational. I've done lots of educating on stream, but I have two videos in a playlist called education on my page. One is called order blocks and one is about tra range trading. Those are two of the main things that I use in my strategy and I'm gonna make one on an SFP eventually because those are basically the three main things I use to do TA and the goal of those videos is so I don't have to explain what they are every stream because regardless, every stream I get what is an OB, what is an SFP and so the idea is to make those videos so you can figure that out so when you're watching the stream, you can understand things you know, at a deeper level because you understand what the concepts and words I'm using, right? Good morning, Maine. I don't care if it's nice for you. Damn, that's alpha as fuck. 28 to 30, then chop is my best case. Well, I hope you're right, bro. Maine, what are some of the names you're thinking of for the new weekly thingy? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Me and, me and Luke are still trying to figure out what to call that new weekly video. And it's already, we already missed our second week. Uh, just because I had such a shit show getting home. So we are going to be recording on Thursday, releasing on the weekend. But I have no idea what we're going to call it yet. Please keep sending suggestions. Yo, main, do you check charts at the morning, set alerts, and then come act only when alerts go off? How many hours a day do you spend in front of the charts? That's such a complex question, bro. It depends. Some days I'm on my computer all day long. Other times I'm not. Like in the bull run, when the price is going vertical and there's endless opportunity all the fucking time i'm on the screen a whole lot more than now right um but yeah i definitely use alerts i trade on the higher time frame generally so i don't need to be at my screen as much as someone who's you know interday trading or intraday trading i guess thoughts on the solana hack i guess i should talk about it because that's what this video is titled um are we surprised no solana's a uh, piece of shit uh, always dealing with outages and just generally very unusable. Um, my understanding is that it is Solana itself that's been compromised or something like that, not just a specific wallet. So just, just because you transfer your money off a phantom wallet to another hot wallet might not necessarily fix your problem. The best thing that you can do in an instance like this, in my opinion, is if you have stuff on the Solana chain on a hot wallet, because we don't know, so far, Trust Wallet and Phantom Wallet, and I'm sure some other ones have been compromised, so it's not just one wallet provider, I would transfer those assets to a tier one exchange and uh, leave them there until things get resolved, because that's gonna be your best bet, other than obviously like cold storage, but I don't know if the wallet has interacted with that ledger and it already has approval to have access to your coins. I don't know. Um, but uh, I'm not super techie like that. So what I would do in this instance, if, if I had any money on Solana chain, which I don't because I'm fucking not retarded, um, I would transfer to a tier one exchange and, and wait it out <clears throat> personally. But definitely go through your wallets and revoke access to any applications, websites, things like that that you have that that have automatic access because you clicked approved on the contract. That's the very least you can do. Does Trader Main post his trade ideas on any platform? I have Twitter, I have Discord, I have Instagram, I have TikTok, I do live stream videos on YouTube. If you're not following me on all those platforms, what is you doing? What's up, Slim? What's up, East Van? Why is your mom texting me again? Bro, she won't stop. You need to talk to her. Um, isn't the daily structure still bullish, though? Why is downside favor, in your opinion? Um, I don't think the daily structure is bullish. This SFP right, to me is a bearish signal near the top of the range. 
Um, we have not broken market structure yet. Hence why I said if the daily is going to maintain bullish market structure, it needs to put in a higher low here, right? However, market structure shifts on the low time frame first. The four hour chart is already in a downtrend. The 12 hour chart has made a lower low, right? High, lower low here. That's your swing low before the new high. So, um, you know, it just the, the weekly chart will look bullish, right? You could have the weekly chart here. This is a low and a high. The daily could be in a complete downtrend, right? And you could be like, well, the weekly is going to put in a higher low and then it doesn't. All of a sudden, the weekly is now in a bearish trend, but you've been longing all the way down, right? You can't just assume that it's going to hold that higher low, but you want to be aware of it and say, okay, well, if the daily is going to maintain bullish market structure, where does that have to happen? And that's the area you want to watch and look for bullishness. And that's that explanation on the long side that I gave. Jane is here. Jane, what did you miss? Just a few brain cells, I'm sure. Nothing else. Um, what kind of time frame do you confirm defending on? H12, H4, H1. Uh, it all depends, man. These are very subjective questions, right? Uh, the time frame is relevant based on what you're trying to figure out. If I have a monthly level and an hourly candle closes behind below it, that's not it losing the level, right? Main, have you vids on SFPs and order blocks? Jesus Christ, guys, what is going on with the questions today? <laughs> you watched the order block video 10 times, but thanks anyways. Order blocks work on all time frames. As long as you're working in a top-down analysis fashion, you can do order blocks on the five-minute chart. It doesn't matter. But if you're trying to determine if a daily move is going to happen based on a five-minute order block, that's not right. Top down analysis, high time frame, then low time frame. As long as you're doing that, order blocks work on all time frames. Why did you not already short on lower time frames? I was in Dallas, out of town all weekend, away from my computer. All right. That's the fake Jane, says another person named Jane. Well, we'll just have to figure out which one of the two of you is dumber, and that's the one we'll know that's the real one. I just explained what uh, I think happened. I don't, I don't know how the Solana hack happened. I just am explaining what I would do to protect myself. I'm not fucking a nerd in terms of understanding that kind of shit at a deep enough level to explain it to you but what you can know for sure is 500 twitter accounts will write fucking threads on it that no one will read uh today and tomorrow this guy says no approvals are needed on solana so yeah that sounds bad Yeah, I think once we SFP'd here, right, with this candle and then SFP'd again on this candle, you absolutely should have been shorting on the low time frame. And if you look here on the low time frame, the hourly, so within this high time frame sell area, the hourly gave you an SFP here and it gave you another SFP here. So to me, if you're not, if you're bearish based on the 12 hour putting in this SFP, you need to be shorting this or this, or this, or this. You need to be shorting one of those moves, um, right? SFP, you didn't get stopped out here, and you easily have a very tight entry. Like, just based on the hourly, this one, this one would have been the loosest because your stop's there, right? Target back to the range high, still two and a half R, but this one, tight as hell. When that SFP'd, look how tight your stop could be there because, like, that's literally... The SFP right there. So that's where you stop. You enter on the candle close, right? That's a banger of an entry if you were watching. And again, you can zoom in within this and go on an even lower time frame and try and find some sort of little entry here on the low time frame like this, right? Maybe you entered based on this, this pullback. This SFP, all within the realm of this hourly SFP, 
So many options here, right? Bearish order block here. Retested, sold off, low time frame with the hourly SFP, with the 12 hour SFP up here, right? So that's that top down confluence and then zooming in, drilling in to find an entry. But again, I wasn't on screen, so it is what it is. I'm waiting for the next trade. All right, so I think Bitcoin is pretty clear here in terms of what I think is happening. Uh, and the two setups, right? I gave you guys my short scenario, right? Move up above here. Look for a short down to here. I will be cautious though around this area, that area that we were watching for the bulls to step in 21,600 to 22,200, $600 range there. That's the fib from this low to this low. It's that sweet spot. So if you want to replicate this zone, go grab your fib. Pull it from that low to that high. Right in the sweet spot is going to be that zone that we're watching here. Okay. Right in this area. That's where the higher low happens on the daily, in my opinion, if it's going to happen at all. And if it does, if this holds here, puts in a higher low, and then we get back above here, I think we definitely charge up to here. But I don't know. I'm looking for the short scenario personally. Okay. So if you have any questions about the... Um, Bitcoin plan, you should rewatch the last fucking 30 minutes of the video. What would you say the ideal split between spot holdings and leverage trading is? I have no idea how to answer that question because it's different for every individual. It's like asking me, what is the right favorite color? I have no idea what works for you. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you like. I don't know what your risk tolerance is, your time horizon, how much money you're dealing with, how good you are at trading. If you're like, I don't know how to trade, how much of my portfolio should be for trading and how much should it be for spot, I would say it should be 100% spot, right? I read both chats, bro. I'm doing my best. There's like 500 fucking people watching between both platforms. It's hard for me to keep up. Jane, how do I know it's the real you? Ask something dumb. And then her next question is BTC back to new all-time high. This is clearly the real Jane. So I'm glad we know. Uh, and I'm glad you're able to verify yourself with such a dumb fucking question. Um, do you like the 12-hour time frame? No, I just use it on all of my charts. I don't really like it though. What's the right favorite color? I fucking hate you guys so much. Um, I'm not even reading that question live. What is wrong with you guys? This guy says, Maine, what's wrong with you today? What's wrong with you guys? You guys are asking some weird shit. Okay, let's talk about Ethereum. Does anyone even care? Um, all right, so Ethereum outperformed Bitcoin out of this lower range here, right? So we had both, both coins ranging. And then when Ethereum broke out of the range here on July 15th, it went on to make a swing high, a higher low, and another higher high, right? Why did Ethereum outperform Bitcoin? Well, remember your answer here, what happened on July 15th? Ethereum BTC blasted upwards. So when you see this happen on Ethereum BTC, we deviate the range low and we start moving back up aggressively here. That means if you had to long either Ethereum or Bitcoin, one or the other, okay, for the month of July, which one should you have longed based on this chart? Since this thing is in an uptrend, that tells you that Ethereum is stronger than Bitcoin. So if you had to long one of these coins for the month of July, the coin that would have went up more is the numerator. And this logic can be used on any fucking pair, any altcoin, stocks, currencies, everything. And I've done two videos going over this exact logic. So go watch those for sure. But uh, Ethereum, that's why it looks better than Bitcoin. Ethereum, Bitcoin has performed well i do think that you know you got to watch now here okay we've had a big move up after deviating the range low okay now we're coming into the first bearish order block since this move down so what you want to watch here i think is is, is ethereum btc because if this trades back below the mid-range and starts trading down 
regardless of whether Bitcoin and Ethereum are going up, this means that Ethereum is weaker than Bitcoin. So what does that mean to you as the trader? So if this starts trading lower, okay, and Ethereum and Bitcoin are both bullish, they both trade higher, but if this is trading lower, that means that you want to be longing Bitcoin over Ethereum because Bitcoin is going to be the stronger of these two pairs, okay? If this is going down and both Ethereum and Bitcoin are going down, that means that you want to be shorting Ethereum because Ethereum is the weaker of the two, okay? So, Ethereum BTC into resistance. Ethereum itself looks better than Bitcoin. You know, looking at the 12-hour chart here, this is a clear uptrend. The swing low of this uptrend is here. So I think just like Bitcoin, right? If you want to see a higher low get put in on Ethereum, you want to see it happen pretty fucking quick here, right? It's retesting this consolidation here. So I would assume that, you know, similar to Bitcoin, which it could trade a little lower, you want to see Ethereum kind of hold this, you know, 1450 to 1520 area for a higher low. Um, but I would not be surprised at all if this is the top, right? And then all of this shit trades lower and we trade right back into the range. Lose here and hold below, boom. Lose here, hold below, boom. So I'd be very cautious trading, uh, you know, being a bull here until probably we get back above, you know, this. I think you have a pretty clear level here, right, of this. So I think your two options on Ethereum are either wait for a reclaim, right? So this is just like a deviation of these highs. So if we now get back above here, boom, you get long with your stop right there, okay? But if we stay below here, Right, I think we probably trade into this low and this just becomes a over under, right? Right? So that's what I'd be watching for on Ethereum in my opinion. Similar to Bitcoin though, I think it needs to hold pretty damn close to where we are right now. Uh, you know, for it to maintain its bullishness. So if I want Bitcoin to make a higher low around 21,600 to 2200 or 22K, 21.6k to 22k i want to see ethereum put in a higher low between you know 1470 let's say and you know 1550 similar kind of range all right so that's what i want to see on ethereum personally i'm watching this i'm saying okay if we stay below here i think there's a good chance that this sells off Right, maybe we get one more move up, but if we stay below this previous high here, to me this looks like the beginning of an over under that's gonna play out bearishly. Okay, so we'll have to wait and see, but I've now given you kind of a scenario for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. Looking at stocks, okay, we're lower lows and lower highs on the highest time frame still, right? Is this a lower high? I don't know yet. Too early to tell. But we are trading into resistance here. So this is what you want to watch this week on ES, in my opinion. We had the bounce because of this monthly level. Big bounce because of the monthly level, sure. Right, looking at the weekly, same thing. Consolidation here, big bounce. But what we want to watch now is this area. If this week continues right tomorrow it's now you know wednesday's trading if we start trading down here and this starts looking shitty and we trade all the way back down here the top is in and crypto's cooked the only thing i could see happening possibly is one more extension maybe we get one more move to the upside above here but then if we get back below right similar to that that move on ethereum right one more move to the upside but then back below then the top is probably in. I do think that this is going to correct soon. So that's why I wanna be cautious. Crypto looks kind of gassed and I think this has maybe one more pop, but uh, wouldn't be surprised if the top is already in here. I'm not saying we have to make a new low immediately, but at least some sort of sharp correction on, on this 
and on Bitcoin, right, and Ethereum, shake some people out. If it wants to trade to 28K and this wants to trade higher, I think a sharp correction, right, and then a move up seems much more likely. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll wait and see. Uh, I'm watching for, you know, th these two kind of scenarios. Like this is it. Or one more leg up above here. Then you have this. One more move up. Boom. Now you're short with your bot, your stop up here, or you're looking for a low time frame short, and then bang it into here at least. Okay. Take a look at dollar as well. I don't know. This just looks like something that's ready to go on a fucking run. I don't know, right? You literally multi-year long range just broke to the upside. So unless it does this and trades back in, to me, this leads to a breakout. And if that happens, risk assets aren't bottoming anytime soon, right? We also have like Pelosi just flew into Taiwan. People are tracking her flight thinking that China is going to shoot it down and it's going to start World War III, right? So I don't know. Seems a little hairy still. Again, people will be like, oh, the macro, where's the macro now? Price went up. I'm like, yeah, we had a green month after multiple, like, what do you mean the macro is irrelevant? Because of this, right? When this is what the rest of the chart looks like. <laughs> Just keep things in perspective. All right, guys. Another question about leverage. Leverage is irrelevant. I don't know how many times I have to say that. All that matters is your position size. You're talking about um, tight invalidation setups. Leverage does not change anything. Your leverage could be 5x or 10x or 100x. The closer your entry is to your stop, the bigger the position size you can use while maintaining 2% account risk or whatever predetermined percent you want. What is the other platform? This is TradingView. Do you think sundials are more of a flex than a Rolex? Um, I don't know, where is the sundial? Like you have a sundial at your house or something? To me, that's just a waste of space. Turn it into a fire pit, bro. Roast some marshmallows. How do we have assurance an order block will work? You don't, you don't know anything will work until it happens. Trading is about making educated guesses using TA to increase the odds that those guesses may be correct, right? You do not know for sure if it's going to work. You can have a level and price can come to it and you say, this is support and price will just do this. Turns out your level just fucking sucked, right? Or maybe it does this, right? But the point is, is that if I say this is a good level and then price comes into the level and then does this, I now know, okay, based on me thinking this is support, and price reacting to my level like this, I'm willing to risk a long setup with you know a target of here with a stop here and hope that my support level works. And if it does, great, you look smart. But if price this, then does this, you were just fucking wrong. You will never know for sure what is going to happen or if your level is gonna work or any of that kind of shit. You do not fucking know. Um, th thoughts on Toronto Blue Jays. I don't really watch a lot of baseball. Yes, I already covered that. You can rewind the video. Um, am I one quarter black? That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Only in my pants. Um, I'm surprised no one has commented on how handsome you look today. Dapper as fuck. That is now the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. Thank you very much, Mr. JW. Bro, can you explain what a bearish order block is? Can you go fuck yourself? Go watch the order block video. Come on, guys. Y'all have been tuning in, watching these videos for so long. You got to watch the order block video to understand what order blocks are. What's my favorite color of the alphabet? Now y'all are just fucking with me. Do you use market cipher? Is it really helpful? I have no idea what that is.
What is the title of the order block video? Take a wild guess what it might be and then report back in the chat. Hey, Ming, can you do analysis on Solana? Interesting to see how price action when the volatile news pushes. I imagine it doesn't look good. I mean, it looks the exact same as fucking Ethereum. Like, I don't know. Doesn't look like it doesn't look like there's been an exploit going on. Normally, you expect to see kind of a big candle like this when there's an exploit. This looks no worse than Ethereum itself. Maybe slightly worse. Doesn't look worse than Bitcoin. Right? Like, could you tell that that's not Bitcoin? If you quickly glanced at that, you might be like, oh, that's Bitcoin. But, you know, it's put in a lower high on the daily. And there's your lower low that you're going to be watching for. But it was unable to even make a new high above, you know, this high after having this bullish market structure here. So to me, all things considered, now you have a lower high and potentially a lower low. All things considered, this doesn't look that bad for the fact that there's been an exploit on the chain. Are ICT videos worth their weight? Listen, I've learned a ton from ICT. I do think the guy is, you know, kind of a bit paranoid and egotistical and thinks everyone is stealing from him and he invented trading and blah, blah, blah. I've learned a lot from him. So I appreciate him and have respect for him always. I know a lot of people don't like him and think he's a fraud and whatever. I don't really care. Like people are like, well, what if he's trading demo? All I know is the shit I've learned from him, I use myself and I make money. So that's all that really matters to me. But that's up to you to decide. He can be very hard to watch. It, he drones on. Uh, he makes things very complex that don't necessarily need to be complex. Uh, watch a few of his videos. And if you're like, I like this, then watch more because there is absolutely tons of value in there. A lot of people shit on ICT, but his concepts are all over CT. Whether people learned it from him himself or from people like me. You see people doing order blocks. You see people drawing these ranges and shit. I started popularizing a lot of that on Twitter like along with like guys like Trader SZ. And guess what? We learned it from ICT. Mean, why do you not trade Forex? I do, but there's just more volatility in crypto. Mean, what color is your underwear? I'm not wearing any. You still have losing streaks. Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. I have winning streaks, losing streaks. I have periods where I'm, you know, 50 50. It's just part of the process, man. What happened to your hair? I'm new here. I have cancer. How dare you? Um, are you buying any yuan in case the new Russia, China, World Reserve currency catches on? Uh, no, I'm not. Who's the CT goat in your opinion? Myself. What kind of question is that? Order blocks have nothing to do with order flow. You're just conflating the word order between those two words and think they have to do with each other. They don't at all. Order blocks and, and shit, it's just supply and demand, right? Um, okay. Does anyone have any questions about the charts here, guys? Or are we just fucking shooting the shit now? Would you risk 2% on a low time frame SFP or do you risk less on those? Which ones? I don't necessarily risk more 
when my stop is super close to my entry, like 2% is 2%. It's more, it has nothing to do with how tight the invalidation is. It's rather my confidence level in the setup. I have A plus setups and I have fucking B setups. I have setups where I'm like, this is every box ticked. I'm super confident in this. That I might risk more than 2% on. I have setups that I'm like, eh, I don't love this, but maybe, and I might rate that a B plus setup, and I'm gonna risk, you know, two percent or maybe one percent on that. Nothing to do with how far my stop is from my entry. You don't just risk more because the stop is tighter. That's stupid as fuck. It's not the size, it's how you use it. That's funny, but it's actually all about the size. Position size is the only thing that matters. How to get better at execution. Lots of practice, man. Do you consider volume important on the charts? I don't see a volume graph. You don't see one because I don't use one and I never have. Not something I look at. Volume can be can appear in an instant. What are you looking for this week for setups? I just talked about that for the entire length of the video. So go watch from the start and you will have my answer. I gave long ideas on both Bitcoin and Ethereum. I talked about some short setups I'm looking at. When was the last time you bought spot when we traded below 20,000? Absolutely, it is an ICT concept. The EQ, equilibrium, and ranges, and trading in a premium discount are all concepts I learned from ICT. How do we watch the video from the beginning? I don't know if you can do it on Twitch, but you can on YouTube. And when the video ends, it will be up for replay. And then I also have a, my editor who always makes a condensed version of the stream, and we post it the next day. But like the SFP on the BTC one hour is that a one or two percent setup? This one to me is a is an A plus setup because it's within the confines of my high time frame thought process. Right? We have our twelve hour swing failure pattern here, right? And on the hourly, you're looking to sell a pullback. Because of this, at the range high, you have your your bearish move here effectively. Oops. Right? I'm looking. What the fuck is going on with these arrows? Fuck these arrows. I'm looking for reasons to short in this up move. I didn't mean to draw that either. Right? Broke market structure here on the hourly. So 12-hour SFP, broke market structure on the hourly, hourly SFP. That's multiple pieces of confluence within the confines of my setup. I'm risking 2% on that. The reason I maybe would only risk 1% on this one is because we've moved quite far away from that initial 12-hour SFP. So I wanted to short as close to this area as possible. This came pretty damn close, right? But at this point, we've already moved down 5%. So shorting here after we're already down 5% off the high of the SFP, to me is not as probable, is not, is not as much of a high probability move. So I might not risk the 2% on that trade. How did you form your own trading system? What was the process? Is there any advice for to get, you gotta try a lot of things and you have to, um, record data right like if you're trying to learn how to trade a certain setup a pa based setup and you say okay here's what i'm looking for in this trade it needs to have you know uh, it's a long setup okay are we near support is there a, a long trigger bullish market structure a bullish over under sfp whatever right is there a bullish order block and you have all these things is my stop defined do i have a clear target you have your checklist here for this one setup now you need to go out and take trades 
that tick off all these boxes and you need to track those trades. Okay, I won two R here, lost one R, won three R, right? And then at the end of the month or the week or whatever you're t tracking on, you say, okay, at the end of the month, my strike rate was 55%. My average win was 2.5 R, right? Okay, now you have data that is telling you that this setup where it ticks off all these boxes is actually profitable. If at the end of the month, your strike rate on this setup is, is 12%, right? And your average trade ends up in a two R, a one R loss, right? Or whatever, or whatever your data suggests, that's not a profitable setup. And maybe you need to tweak it. Okay, was I missing something? Or maybe it's just a bad setup in general. So you need to try a lot of things. You need to keep data right? Because you cannot have a system without data because once you find something that works, it has to be repeatable. Certain aspects of that have to be controlled, right? You can't change parts of the system at any given moment. It cannot be random. It needs to be systematic, hence the word, right? So you have to have certain items that are controlled. Okay, all of these things need to happen for me to take this trade. And then if you, th that's repeatable over time, you have created a system, Uh, my girlfriend told me my size is inside. Ouch, bro. I'll see you in the gym, okay? You use 12 hours planning time frame. Do you execute on the one hour? Yeah, I like sometimes I use the weekly and execute on the 12 hour, but I like the 12 hour, one hour kind of mix. You should probably tell people to go watch Cred's YouTube videos. Yeah, I absolutely think Cred's like, Cred has very beginner level videos. He's an excellent orator. He's very organized. It's like a university level course in basic TA. It's all for free on his YouTube. He has a ton of great videos. I would say my videos are a bit more intermediary. I expect you to know some things to be able to follow along. Have you ever used bots before? No. Would you rather own one Milady or two Campi Pandas? Well, seeing as Campi Pandas apps actually have given me some utility, I've gone to UFC, I'm going to party in Vegas with them. Um, that seems like a way cooler NFT to have. In terms of appreciating value, I have no idea. I don't know what Miladies even trade at. All I know is there's like a weird cult about Miladies online and that makes me hate it instantly because I'm an old grumpy man. Main, how many years have you been trading? I first started trading in 2013. I don't think I had any idea what I was doing until 2016. I feel like this has just turned into an AMA. Maybe if you guys want at some point tomorrow, I can go on Discord or, or a Twitter spaces and, and do an AMA or something like that. Um, but uh, I think... Uh, how do you join your Discord? I can't find it on your website. On my website, it tells you what you need to do to gain access to my Discord. So go to TraderMain.com, follow the instructions. It tells you exactly what to do to join the Discord. There's a button on there, I believe, that says join Discord. So I don't know if you're lying to me or what. Literally, it says right here, join the Discord. How to access the Discord. So... Come on, dog. All right, guys. Um, I think this video um, is good to go. Uh, long enough. We're a little over an hour here. I didn't want this one to be too long. But uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum plans laid out. I'm going to very quickly summarize, okay? Very, very quickly summarize hyperspeed. Bitcoin, if you're bullish, I think you want to see it hold and put a higher low around this area here. Okay, that's what you want if you're a bull on Bitcoin, in my opinion. Okay, the bearish setup I'm looking for to form is a 12 hour kind of SFP above this high or something along those lines and then a sell back off. And then I'm looking to trade that short into here. Okay, Ethereum, we're looking at a very similar setup here. Low to high on the FIB. 
you want to see Ethereum defend this area, in my opinion, on a pullback. 1450 to like 1520, maybe a little higher, but this is the area, I think, I would probably say this is the area here that is equivalent to that BCC higher low, but on Ethereum. Those are the two areas that you want to look for, in my opinion, if you're bullish and you want to see this rally continue. All right, guys. You're a bull and that's not the setup you want to see. Let me guess. The setup you want to see looks something just like this. Is that what you want to see? Do you mentor people? Um, no. I don't have any sort of paid mentorship or paid group or anything like that. Maybe I should. I don't know. Maybe I'm fucking missing out on money. I know Loma and Cold-Blooded Schiller have a paid group and Trader SZ has a paid group. I do everything for free and maybe that makes me an idiot. I use the 12 hour and the one hour time frames. Trader SZ does not use the 12 hour time frame at all. Don't lie to me, boy. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks for tuning in, man. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to sign off here. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Again, watch the order block video. Watch the range trading video. Watch old streams and you will have a better understanding of what I'm talking about in the new streams because I explain SFPs, order blocks, ranges, and all these basic questions, I answer them in most streams. So the more streams you've watched, the better you're going to understand the streams going forward, okay? Um, I'm on Loma's private group. It's actually good. 50 plus hours of content. Then why are you looking for a new a new uh, group then, man, if that one's good. Um, I would buy your group, says Jane. Jane, I would never let you join any sort of service that allows you to speak to me directly. Don't be silly. Um, all right, guys, love you so much. I will talk to you all Monday, and I'll potentially have another video out this week or something. Condensed stream will be up tomorrow. Again, if you want to help me out, use that link in the description. Sign up for Prime, deposit some money, help your boy out. Love you so much. I'll be home all week, so I'll be more active on Discord. I'll be more active on Twitter and things like that. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, obviously feel free to shoot me a message. I'm backed up on DMs, but I'll do my best to get caught up.